Dance Your Heart on Fire podcast, episode number 53. So yes, the title of this podcast, Fuck Your Cover Zone, it sounds a little bit offensive, but at the same time, you have to continue to push yourself and realize that pushing yourself continuously outside of your comfort zone is something that is, it's a marathon kind of thing. It's not a sprint. It's not like you take one class and it's something that's kind of perpetual. You perpetually push yourself outside of your comfort zone over and over and over again. Welcome to the Dance Your Heart on Fire podcast, the podcast dedicated to inspiring dancers worldwide whose hearts have been touched by music and dance. The universal language of dance and music is spoken by many of us throughout the world. We want to motivate the dancer in you by sharing stories, insights, and ideas to enhance your journey. Join us now with your host, Charles Ogar. Hello, hello, everyone. This is Charles with the Dance Your Heart on Fire podcast. This is Charles Ogar. Ogar, your host. Thank you for joining us this week for yet another podcast. And with this particular podcast, I would like to start off the topic of the podcast by not apologizing if you found the title a little offensive. Um, Maybe you were offended because you may have some regret about a missed opportunity, um, maybe some lack of action or playing small sometime in the past regret about not showing up to do your best to take advantage of an opportunity to be the best version of you financially emotionally physically etc regret sucks and before you think i'm on my high horse looking down on you all i just want to let you guys know that i really 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 know regret and it fucking sucks um i've had lots of regret i've had envy i've had first-hand experience with lots of jealousy like eat at me from the inside and despite all of those negative feelings that I have gone through personally I still stand by my statement of fuck your comfort zone as crappy as it is to go through some really tough and challenging and awkward and depressing times in life they are definitely opportunities to also grow and step up to the plate and to become a better person. The quote that comes to mind right now is a smooth sea never made for a skilled sailor, you know? And it all kind of boils down to self-awareness. You guys have heard me talk about self-awareness before on this podcast, so this is just kind of another angle of that self-awareness piece. And using dance as your guide into revealing some more of that self-awareness. It's interesting, like over my years of teaching, you kind of see more people on two sides of the shit spectrum. What do I mean by the shit spectrum? I mean, you seem to see a lot of people who walk around feeling like a piece of shit. Or you see to see a lot of people walking around like they're hot shit, you know. And I think we have to kind of find a balance between both of those. We can't walk around with our tails between our legs and being afraid to kind of really express or to take risk or uh, be afraid to be creative and not be afraid of of who's watching or who's going to judge you. And on the other side, we can't walk around like God's gift to the dance floor and walk around beating our chest and, and think we're above everybody. You know, there's a balance that it should be achieved, at least in my opinion, you know? So, your comfort zone. How aware are you of your comfort zones in your dancing? And what do you do when you come across the limits of your comfort zone? Is it uncomfortable and you back away so you just stay in, in the safe spot? Or do you look for opportunities to push yourself out of that comfort zone. We're going to talk about that in today's podcast um, because if I look back at my journey, if I look back at my journey in dance and even 
outside of dance emotionally, financially, career wise, my comfort zone has been pushed over and over and over again. And it's really, really, it's tough. It's, it's not an easy thing. And I want to kind of talk to you about a little bit my journey and then also give you guys some tips and some resources that I have come to find that have really helped me uh, continually push my comfort zone over and over and over again. So let's let's talk about your dancing for a little bit. If we're building this self-awareness in dance, I think a good question to kind of ask yourself and not just ask yourself in your head, like challenge yourself to go the extra step and create an audio note or create a small video of you recording yourself or write this down somewhere. What things come easy to you and what things don't? What do you feel your strengths are in your dancing and what do you feel your weaknesses are? Maybe you have really, really good body movement or better body movement than most, but your balance isn't good or vice versa. Um, that's more of an example of a, a physical comfort zone, but there's also mental comfort zones as well. What are the limits of your mental capacity? In a previous podcast, I've talked about the connection trifecta and how that involves connecting with yourself on a physical and a mental level on your partner on a physical and a mental level and also the music and really embodying that music you know each one of these requires a certain amount of mental space and the first stage of connection that i feel is super super important is to connect with yourself and i feel like if you're able to connect with yourself on a physical level and be aware just physically of yourself how you carry your weight your posture, is your balance more towards the front of your toes, moving to the back of your heels? Um, are you straight? Are you tense and relaxed? Are you carrying tension? Being able to pick up on those things in within yourself, I think is really, really, really important because then it sh sets the stage for you to connect, be able to ask yourself questions more on an emotional or mental level. Are you present? right now are you worried about making a mistake are you living in the future are you worried about mistakes that you've had in the past or are you really just here right now on a clean slate on a clean slate ready to dance so i feel like all those factors are really really important on connecting with yourself and once you do have a good grasp of yourself on a physical slash mental level, then I feel like you're able to connect to your partner. And if you realize how it doesn't really come natural for you to connect with yourself and the struggle and like searching within yourself and just kind of trying to let all the tension off and the, the struggle that comes with that, the insecurity that comes with that, just the overall awareness of that process of with yourself, I feel it's a lot easier for you to be able to empathize and relate to another person going through the same struggle. So now you're able to offer support, you're able to offer comfort, you're able to be open to connect with somebody. And especially with my primary dance, which is Kizomba, I've experienced many times where you can be body to body to someone where there's no space. You couldn't even fit fit a piece of paper in between you guys and yet still feel a block like they're not fully connected with somebody, you know. So I think it's important to be able to realize that we have to be open to connect with somebody. That's the second stage. So if we're able to analyze and be aware of ourselves, we're able to empathize and connect with our partners, then we can try to figure out what is the music saying to us? What is the music speaking to us? Is it a slow song, fast song? Um, what are the lyrics in the song? What's the overall vibe of the song? And we being conduits of the music and allow the music to flow through us, you know? And I just feel it takes so much mental awareness. Um, in the many, many, many private lessons that I've taught over the years, I see this level of 
of awareness and I can kind of judge a dancer's experience based on how well they're able to handle the awareness. Sometimes they're so super aware of their bodies, they're super aware of their partners and then they know the music like the back of their hands and that yields to the opportunity for some amazing dancers on the dance floor. But if they're still tripping up over themselves, if they have a confidence issue, if they have a balance issue or something like that, then that takes up the majority of their mental capacity and then they don't have any more space to be able to to be able to listen to what their partner is saying or be able to listen to what the music is saying and listen to all the different subtleties. And especially with my primary dance with Kizoma, since it's such a free form dance, you can literally dance to anything that's in the music at any given time. You have to be able to really listen to everything that's going on with the music outside of just the bass beat. And that's getting into musicality. That's a whole nother podcast. But um, your comfort zones, where do you struggle in each of these three stages, you know? And there's levels to each stage. So I challenge you to take a self inventory of yourself and realize where is it where that you start to struggle? Where is it where it gets a little bit hard? Where does it start to get easy? Try to keep a log, try to record yourself, try to be aware of when these things happen because these are your opportunities to grow. Not only do you have to make what you do well, your strengths stronger, but you also have to kind of make sure you have at least the bare fundamentals available of balance and rhythm and things like that to be able to have some really awesome dances. I know it's not easy to really think about limitations. It's not easy to put yourself into a position of discomfort. And I think this is one thing that's really important for instructors to realize that the students are coming out to your classes, taking private lessons with you, coming out to your workshops to put themselves in a position of discomfort. That is how we grow. And if you look at it at one particular angle, we are there to alleviate or allow them to have fun or entertain their learning process, which is innately a process of discomfort. And I feel like as an instructor, sometimes we get into this particular mode where things come naturally for us. And to the students, sometimes we forget about how it is to be a beginner and how it is to struggle and how it is to get it wrong and to have things not make sense. Um, I recently went out to a Lindy Hop social here in Austin at the Fed on a Thursday night. I do not dance any swing or Lindy Hop. And I just went there and I felt and I basically I went to the social and I was a wallflower on the wall watching everybody. There were some people that came up and introduced themselves and things like that. Um, I did muster up the courage to go and ask them ladies to dance and I tell them, bear with me, I'm just a beginner. I'm just learning this out so they don't have like these expectations or anything like that. I had some ladies that gave me a repeat dance. I have other ladies that declined a repeat dance. And this happened again a few days ago when I went to a blues social. I don't dance any blues. I'm a good dancer, I can lead, I dance salsa, I dance kizomba, but I don't speak quote unquote blues. And the same experience happened with the blues scene as well. I went to the class, didn't know what I was doing. Um, I could hear the music, but I didn't speak the blues movement, you know. And the instructors danced with me once. They didn't come out and ask me for another dance. Some ladies were gracious enough to give me a dance. And that was just one dance. And then they had their friends that they knew and things like that. And... Some ladies, we kind of clicked a little bit better and they were able to give me multiple dances. So for my instructors and for the people who take the workshops, like I think it's really, really important to kind of be gracious in these learning environments because people are not only pushing themselves out outside of their social comfort zones, but also their dance comfort zones. And it's and on top of that, they're trying to become a better dancer. So so yes, the title of this podcast, Fuck Your Cover Zone, it sounds a little bit offensive, but at the same time, you have to continue to push yourself and realize that pushing yourself continuously outside of your comfort zone is something that is, it's a marathon kind of thing. It's not a sprint. It's not like you take one class and it's something that's kind of perpetual. 
you perpetually push yourself outside of your comfort zone over and over and over again. Let's take a quick moment to thank our sponsors. Have you been looking to level up your Kizomba, but you don't have the local instructors to take you there? Are you looking for something concrete to practice with your Kizomba partner? Or are you looking for Kizomba lessons that you can take on your schedule and the comfort of your home? If you answered yes to any of these questions, look no further. Learn to kids.com is what you need. Progressive step-by-step -step lessons that you can take at your pace in the comfort of your home or anywhere with a solid internet connection on your PC, Mac, or any smartphone. New videos are added every month. You can try this awesome resource out 30 days free at learn to kids.com slash podcast. After the 30 days free is only a low $15 per month. But again, the special offer for the Dance Your Heart On Fire listeners, 30 days free at learntokids.com slash podcast. You won't find this offer anywhere else. Learntokids.com slash podcast. And now back to our show. Uh, this year for me, just looking at 2017, we're in September now, the middle of September. And I have pushed myself outside of my comfort zone Travel wise, this has been the most traveling I've done a lot. That's a, it's a blessing to travel as much, but it's also a grind. Um, I went to Sweden and I went to go and dance with other dancers and put myself around dancers that are better than me. Um, we were in Paris earlier this year and I took like 10 hours of privates just having them really try to chop me up. And, and really look at my technique and put myself out of my comfort zone, stretch my mental capacities and things like that, and feel how it is to struggle. Yes, it's on a higher level than like what a beginner would be, but if you are aware of the learning process and how frustrating it can be sometimes and you want the students to come out and you want to grow the scene in the community, we need to inspire our dancers to continuously push themselves out of their comfort zone. Part of that is leading by example. And another part is just being able to empathize with somebody's learning process and make that process. I don't want to say easy, but you want to kind of show some grace of the process. If they are continually coming out to your classes or taking private lessons with you or going out to festivals and things like that. Yes, dancing is fun. Yes, it's cool to just connect and, and not have the pressure of having to to improve or be judged upon or anything like that. However, I think that once we set the bar, then it's 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 an, an inspiring thing. Um, and this is where I want to bring in a particular TED talk that I listened to a few days ago. So this particular TED talk is by Bill Ekstrom. And this particular TED talk also has over a million views. The title of the TED Talk is Why Comfort Will Ruin Your Life. And that's a pretty compelling title. Like we seem to always strive for the things that are easy and things that are comfortable. We want the nicer car. We want the nicer job. We want to earn more income and things like that. But in order for us to strive and meet those things that require more money or more effort or a little bit more discipline and persistence, we have to put ourselves in situations of discomfort. And this particular video stood out a lot to me because it brought forth the concept of what growth rings are. And there are four growth rings that Bill produced, introduces into the video. And I'll include a link of that particular TED Talk in the show notes here so you guys can check that out. Um, at the bottom, of the growth rings, the fourth one at the bottom, we have stagnation. That means no growth, no challenge, just kind of really remaining the same or even declining, stagnation. A ring above that is order. Order is where things are predictable. Order is where there's no challenge. You're just kind of cruising along and everything is kind of smooth sailing, if you will. I'm going to skip the third ring and go up to the very top ring. And that ring he labeled chaos. Chaos is where everything is unpredictable. Yeah, you don't know where you're going. It's hard to kind of find a footing or ground to kind of stand on because everything is just such uh, chaos and nothing is predictable. So obviously you can't grow there either because you're kind of like in a panic mode, if you will. 
and the ring, the third ring from the bottom. So we had stagnation, order. The third one here is complexity. And complexity is where we get to grow. It is between order and chaos. How can we find those limits of order and put yourself into a complex situation, a little bit of discomfort where you are able to grow, but not too much to where you're in complete chaos. Um, in the video, he talks about three different ways to put yourself into modes of discomfort. Number one is forced upon you. So these are situations to where like you lose a job, um, injury, health issues, and things like that, things that force you into situations of discomfort. The second one is someone helps you get there. So you have a coach, a mentor, a parent, a brother, sister, some kind of figure there that you're looking up to that's seeking out advice to put you in these places of complexity, discomfort to get you to grow. And the third place is if you don't have a mentor, you trigger it yourself. And I know a lot of us don't have the, the luxury or I'm not sure if luxury is the best word, but the, the access to a mentor in the dancing or in Kizoma to kind of push you. Sometimes we just have YouTube videos and a lot of it goes, does come down to our habits that we have around how we practice around dance. And that is definitely something I want to kind of detail into how to practice more effectively and, and track your growth and things like that along the way. But I found this really, really cool. Um, I like the, the growth rings and kind of give that perspective. And I also like the three reasons that he was able to kind of provide. Um, we in the dancing definitely need to either find somebody to put us in those situations of discomfort. That means going out to take classes. That means going out to take private lessons. Um, and practicing and putting yourself in those areas where you are able to grow and also triggering it yourself um, to get yourself to become a better dancer. And just like the growth rings were talking about, you don't want to put yourself to where you're in over your head and you feel completely defeated at the end of what you're doing. You want to find something to just make yourself a little bit better. And this is where I go into, and I found an article by James Clear. He studies kind of like the human psychology around habits and, and personal development and things like that. And he has this concept. So James Clear brings up the idea of becoming 1% better each and every day. So this isn't some, okay, I need to dedicate 10 hours to dancing today for me to become a better dancer. The accumulative advantage of small habits compounded over time to make yourself better. And one of the punchlines in the blog that I'm going to include for you guys in the show notes is if you get 1% better each day for one year, you end up 37 times better by the time that you're done. So it's really, really coming down to those really small habits that we have in in our day to day, week to week kind of practice. And I also want to say there is also a a cost of inaction. If we do not take an action in a particular direction, we do become worse. The rust sets in quick. It's like me being able to go and run a mile in five minutes today. And if I don't go running again for three weeks and I go and try to run again, I'm not going to be able to do that mile in the five minutes, you know? So it's kind of the same thing with the dancing. What can we do to keep ourselves to maintain where we're at? Because we have to maintain that level with a minimal amount of effort. And then on top of that, just strive for a very small percentage, 1% better each day. Um, I'll share those examples. And he kind of breaks it down into two steps. Um, the first one is do more of what already works. Step two, avoid tiny losses and things like that. And step three, measuring backwards. And I won't go into detail. He goes into weight loss and strength training, all this kind of stuff and things like that. But it really, really helps to kind of reflect and measure your progress on a very small scale to become a better dancer. So these two particular 
resources, the TED Talk from Bill Ekram, the concept here from James Clear of continuous improvement and becoming 1% better over time really, really helped. And the last resource that I will share with you guys comes from Tim Ferriss. I'm not sure if you guys have heard of Tim Ferriss, but he talks um, a lot about human potential, human development, habits, all that kind of stuff. Similar to James Clear, he's the author of The 4-Hour Work Week, The 4-Hour Body, and The 4-Hour Chef. Um, all excellent books. And he also has another book called Tools of Titans, which is really, really awesome. I'm going through that book as well. And he has this one video where he talks about why you should define your fears instead of your goals. And it's another YouTube video I was watching here as well. And it just really helps you take these big fears that you have in your head and really kind of make them not so scary anymore to kind of develop a plan around them and not allow those fears to put us in a state of inaction, which also has a cost. Not taking any action also has a cost in your development because time passes by. So I'll leave you on this particular quote. One particular quote that really struck a personal chord with me was, we suffer more in imagination than in reality. And if I were to apply that to my dance journey, one thing that really resonates with that particular quote is just like being able to get the courage to go and ask a girl to dance, you know? And we're all afraid of that no, or we're afraid that she's gonna laugh at us or completely ignore us or some kind of crazy thing that we're imagining in our head. And over my course of experience, I mean, she tells you no, know, like like what's gonna happen at that point, having an exit plan or something like that. But most of the time, the, the, the followers definitely are gracious and say yes, but sometimes you let the fear of that crazy situation, that crazy scenario in your head keep you from taking the action that's going to make you happy and I guess enjoy the socials or make yourself a better dancer. So, three word sources, Three resources here for you guys to check out. The TED Talk by Bill Ekram, the blog or the concept by James Clear about becoming 1% better, and why you should define your fears instead of your goals by Tim Ferriss. I like to look at these things not only to for myself to grow inside of dance, but also outside of dance as an entrepreneur and as a person and things like that. And that's why I really wanted to bring these concepts to the dance world so that way we can become better dancers, better teachers and things like that and really help grow the dance scene and, and keep ourselves motivated, keep ourselves um, realistic and just kind of tapping into that human potential that we all know we have. And in order for us to tap into that human potential, we have to stretch, we have to push ourselves outside of that comfort zone, which brings us back to the title of the podcast, Fuck Your Comfort Zone. Really look for those small, small wins. You don't have to do this big, huge, gigantic efforts to kind of improve your dancing. It really, really helps to make those small habits, those small wins and tracking how you're dancing, how you're improving to really see those results over time. And I hope this podcast was inspirational for you and helpful for you. I'd love to hear any feedback that you have on this particular topic. And also love to hear from you if you have any ideas of any future topics you'd like to see on the podcast. Until then, dance your heart on fire. Thank you so much for listening. And I'll see you guys next week. Thank you for checking out the Dance Your Heart on Fire podcast today. Be sure to check out neokizomba.com for links to everything that we chatted about today, as well as some awesome free resources to enhance your Kizomba journey. Thanks, folks,